It's Tech Tuesday, coming back from a short week and a weekend with only 12 hours of sleep. I'm Liam Spore. Number five. This story is only for those of you who know what I mean by Hackintosh. I expect most aren't tech savvy enough to be the Hackintoshing type, but it's in the countdown, so deal. The latest Snow Leopard update is rumored to break compatibility with Atom processors. Atoms are the chips that are used almost universally in every netbook from HP to Asus. This means that with a bit of work, OS X Snow Leopard could be pretty seamlessly installed on a cheap netbook. Apple kinda looks at this as a no-no, which legally it is, but until now Apple hasn't done anything at the software level to outright restrict Hackintoshing. The break is only in the developer build, so it hasn't yet hit the market, and by the time the update pops up on your Mac or netbook, the break may be gone. I realize now that I could have had eight Hackintosh netbooks for the price of this thing. I'm a bit ashamed, but there aren't near as many bragging rights packaged in with a netbook. Number four. The DSi XL is set to be the next chunk of plastic you will plan to carry around, but realize when you use it in public, people stare, unless you're 12 and wear Pokemon t-shirts. The XL has an enlarged screen, 94% larger, with an enlarged price of $220. It's set to release in early 2010 and will be aimed at older people who can't see the screen so well. Might as well just hook this thing up to a pedometer or a pocket reading light slash magnifier. If only Nintendo could make their games 94% more enjoyable, I might bother playing my DS. Number three, even though the iPhone is seeing some real competition from the Droid and other new smartphones from HTC and such, Apple isn't going to give up making news with their phone releases. No, they aren't replacing the 3GS already, however surprising that is. Instead, the news comes from rumors that there will be a $99 iPhone 3GS 8GB to replace the 8GB 3G for this holiday season. So you get all the same storage but an upgraded processor to play all those apps for the same price. It kind of depresses me how every good bit of news I hear about the iPhone ends with, aw, but it's on AT&T, darn. Number two, look around you. Chances are Google owns that. Well, at least it owns the pictures of it. Right in the line with the release of the Droid and Android 2.0, Google released its new free turn-by-turn -turn direction app. I know you're thinking, well, Google gives stuff away for free all the time. What's the big deal? Well, remember that TomTom and Garmin's apps cost upwards of $100 for turn-by-turn -turn directions. Needless to say, their stocks dropped a bit whenever Google decided to give out this service for free. How did they pull it off? Well, one, Google is painfully rich and owns everything, including map data. Garmin, on the other hand, rents map data from other companies that only map stuff, and then Garmin takes all that data and makes it usable. So to cover the cost of map rental, Garmin has to charge service costs. Google skipped the middleman and went and mapped the entire US and most of Europe themselves with a combo of satellites and their street view feature. Since Google owns all of this data, they incur no costs, meaning they can give it away for free without going bankrupt. I pulled off that entire explanation with only one economics class back in seventh grade. Regardless, we should all be a bit more afraid that Google will literally own everything around you one day. But until then, we can enjoy knowing where to go for free. Number one, Infinity Ward is back with a mission to make you never want to play Call of Duty World at War again. Modern Warfare 2 takes what you loved about COD 4 adds more explosions, missions, and environments. Then it makes it better, blows something else up, and then makes you want to replay the whole thing with every difficulty. Players get to battle through environments from arctic bases to desert towns to what looks like space and what is an undoubtedly epic story. That's just the story mode. Online play gets an overhaul with new maps, new perks, and new rewards for spending hours upon hours in matches. There's even more customization in classes, customizable killstreak rewards, and more depth in upgrading weapons and equipment. Might as well just quit your job now and drop out of school. This game will take over your life. That's not necessarily a bad thing though. That's all for this week. Check out Tech Tuesday on YouTube at youtube.com slash tech Tuesday. Till then, I'm Liam Spore.